derived our ancestors' view according to which at the moment of death the warrior was laid to Valhalla. But not just as a soul. Look at the precision. Okay, maybe we can even actually read him clinically. Earlier I was telling him he's not an academic, we can't read him clinically, but look at that. Isa das karke clarify kar raha. Further, he's is is increasing his level of precision. But not just as a soul. Rather in a radiating corporeality resembling the hero's body in battle. What happens when a hero falls in battle? That radiation, that when you see his body, you know, you're like, wow, kya lada tha isne? You know, kya fighter hai hai? Oh, kira hai? Uska body ko to pura log leke pura hai ga na? I don't know, think of the tribal revolts, you know, Santhal Hul and all. Very elemental. You know, the Adivasis used to understand colonialism. I know I am mixing registers here, but uh, please allow me this. The, the Adivasis used to have this, the way they used to understand colonialism was not in terms of your pathetic theories of economic drain, colonial surplus, civilizing mission, no. They said that this white man, this is the devil. Did you see the devil? Yes, I saw the devil. Let's go and kill him. And apparently in the Caribbeans, not the Adivasis here, but in the Caribbeans, a friend told me, I don't know whether he was just, uh, you know, exploiting my, my gullibility or something. He said that they would take the body of the white man and I don't know, like take a spoon or something and make holes in it or something. You know? And let the... I don't know what happens if you just put those holes. Then they will have the skin or something like that. Some like crazy, very elemental. So you might want to call it gory thing. So right? Yeah, it's oriental conception. But the fact that we are saying always that it is oriental... That should not be a way to again deny the elemental in the in quote unquote the orientalist or among I mean among the natives, which is us, <laughs> right? So uh, so when um, when 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 Birsa Munda or some tribal leader who led the fight against colonialism. And which is not really colonial. So even the understanding of the colonial master is very elemental. As a devil or something, right? Um, which means that this immediate laser conflagration. So when the, otherwise if you see in terms of the broader framework of the freedom movement, when an Indian was seeing a white man, he didn't feel that immediate, like as though it's oil and water. Or it, there's no immediate combustion. There's no immediate explosion there. You know, rather they would also be servants or something, you know, they would like, uh, Indians would uh, go to their schools and would love to learn English and, you know, it was like a love-hate relationship. It was very internal. There's some kind of a, uh, that corporeal, at the level of the body, at the level of the immediate, that mere sight would arouse that kind of, uh, if not hatred, some kind of a, uh, some kind of a, you know, uh, like a fire. That was not there. You see that with, 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 uh, with black people often. The, the racial antagonism is very sharp. Right? Uh, so here, the, broadly speaking, the Indian freedom movement didn't have, didn't really oppose colonialism at that elemental level. It was more like, okay, they're doing this to us. They didn't give us this. So let's negotiate. Let's bargain. But when we bargain, yeah, Indian freedom movement is full of bargain and negotiation and like lobbying and all, right? And then when we don't get anything, uh, when they are not even giving us a dominion status, uh, then we say we want full independence. Only in 1930, I think, the mainstream of the freedom movement uh, really talks about full independence, right? So, so think about the elemental in these ways. So, yeah, so the fallen soldier, the hero who is fallen in battle, I am reminded of something else. Again, different register, you heard about Fidel Castro. 
again, I go by a lot of hearsay, I think. Again, someone had told me once, people might be lying to me all the way, you know, <laughs> uh, that the CIA had deputed someone, and uh, we know that, that CIA wanted to, wanted to uh, kill Castro, right? And uh, so when CIA tried to kill Castro, uh, the guy who um, uh, was killing, trying to kill Castro, uh, he finds, finally gets Castro, you know, he's sleeping or something, and he has, I don't know what, he had a gun or something to kill him. But when he went very close to Castro, the fellow just couldn't kill him, you know. He saw him sleeping and then that aura, that thing exuding out of his, out of him, just couldn't kill him. Do you think it's a story planted by the Castroites to hype Castro's image? Could be. But the fact that they chose to uh, circulate this kind of a story means that there's something about the radiating corporeality. That's one. At the level of the elemental that Hugo talks about. The other would be, of course, and so there is war there, right? This war, this battle there. I mean, India and Pakistan constantly aching for battle. It is at that fundamental level, it is not that twisted. You know, like little babies want to break things, don't they? What's a baby who never breaks things, who never tears your nice old books and all? Or nice new books? What kind of a baby is that? Who doesn't smash things? Who does not know how to get burnt? Who falls? If all these childhood injuries, you know. <laughs> Right? It's all there. The elemental is, is very much there. Uh, uh, you might say that a, a kid, uh, you know, uh, an, infa an infant baby maybe wants to play with its own shit or something, you know. Right? It's only later I think we learn that we shouldn't do that. That's bad spelling, foul thing. You've got to go and drop it. <laughs> right? So there's this, all this, uh, he's operating in this kind of level. Very uncouth, very impolite, very uncivil, very dirty, dirty. So war is very much there. The other is technology. He, he, is, he is a great theorist of technology. He, he loves technology, you know. He's getting excited about it. What do you think you would have th thought about the troll armies, you know? The right-wing trolls? I think you would have loved it. He said, yes. The ideal uh, person in 2020 is the troll army, the leader of the troll army. So think about the guy who's fallen in battle as the leader of the troll army, not a real arm, troll army. You know, troll armies are more uh, active than real armies. Think about India and Pakistan. Sankhanad, there is a uh, Twitter handle. Sankhanad or something. What are the other Twitter handles? You know? Huh? What is that? Op India. Op India? Okay. But the Op India, doesn't, the name doesn't sound exciting. Like Sankhanad. Sir, a word you. Rising Hindu. Yeah, I followed it for some days. I couldn't get it. Sir. Which one? Sankhanad? Yes, sir. Yes, Sankhanad is frustrated Indian. You see that frustration we are talking about is actually there. But what you see in this troll thing is this elemental thing. Like this is real battle going on. And these pro Kanaya trolls are also there. You know? Arab Goswami ko aisa kar do. Because the troll space, it's a free for all. Elemental, the baby is playing with his own shit there, you know. Right? It's elemental. It's gross. Kali kolo, sab kuch chal 
So maybe not what corporeality was this? Not that not the, yeah, so not radiating corporeality, but radiating because there's no corporeality in the in the cyberspace. It's radiating cyber reality, something like that. And there are fallen soldiers there because sometimes they win, sometimes they lose. Sometimes Swara Bhaskar ko Esa Dia Kali Esa Mara Usko Kunal Kamra ko Or Kunal Kamra thought he is like this soldier when he got his victim in the plane and then he said Apto Mai Isko Video Banaunga. You know, it's like they, you don't spare anyone there. You don't think, oh, but Arnav is on his own private visit. He is a, just a co-passenger in the plane. You know, this Kunal Kamra is not going to think that. Why? Because Kunal Kamra is saying, to say, but he does not spare us. Why should we spare him? Look at that. Look at that. Right? The visceral, elemental kind of a thing. So, so in that sense, the war is fought daily. The India-Pakistan war is fought daily and hourly in India as well as in Pakistan because in the Pakistan also you have a similar thing right and, 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 and of course that is mediated through technology, through the internet, mobile phone apps and everything and Junger is, a, is someone who welcomes this, I mean he inaugurates this kind of a viewpoint towards technology and, and that's where the significance of the first world war comes what is the significance of the First World War in terms of the use of technology? What were the kind of things that was used for the first time on a mass scale in the world? In the First World War? I'm asking a factual question. Aerial attacks? Were there aerial attacks in the First World War? Yeah, but the aerial attacks were there. Very few. Yeah, but the aerial was inaugurated there. Like people didn't know the aerial. Because see, war, what happens? You see, Junger has gone through that war, right? He's fought in the trenches. He's not a, forget about an armchair guy. He's not even a Kirana store guy. He's not even a rickshaw puller guy. He's a guy who's actually there. Abhinandan. Too sweet a name he has. Captain Abhinandan, who was not released so quickly, like it's Kulbuls and Yadav or something, who is not even in jail, who is fighting. He's like Rambo or something. I'm sorry again, bad examples. You can forget it as soon as you hear it. <laughs> Rambo, you know Rambo movies in the jungle? Elemental, right? Then he was, you see, see the scene there where Oska cut jata, then he's stitching his own hand, his own arm. Elemental, right? Kind of a thing. So, First World War, it is the First World War, first time it is happening. So, war means there's an intensified activity, highly concentrated. And you are using technology, not just using technology, but also technology is getting invented. Because war effort means that the entire industry, everything is deployed at the front and the sons have to go and mothers have to produce more sons, uh, industries have to produce more steel, uh, gun factories have to produce more guns, table factories have to produce more tables, food has to be sent there, there will be more trucks to be, for. it's like a huge thing that is happening. So when a country goes through a war effort of that, India and Pakistan hasn't seen anything. These are like little bachas who know nothing about war, talking about war, war, let's go to war. But Europe has gone through that. So you've got to be able to imagine what is going on here when Junger is saying all this. So uh, I think the aerial thing becomes very important. And the fact that, and the use of radio has increased. Like say we talk about what has been the impact of social media on internet on this world today. Similarly at that time. We had radio. You had all these influences. Um, so Jiga Vartov's film, the fact that the movie camera becomes so important is also part of this. The, for the first time from the human eye, you go to the 
movie camera so there are there are there are parallels here you can you you know that jiga vartov is in the same period as this guy because he's, he you would also love the idea of the movie camera replacing the human eye right technology and the fact that humans and technology and machines are not to be problematized oh technology machines is taking over what happened to the real humans no the real human the elemental in the real human or the elemental which is the real human can actually be expressed in and through technology so steel iron these are real things just as gandhi would say the charkha this guy would say the steel so one of his other book i think that is his reminiscences from his experience from the first world war that is writing his title is storm of steel because the steel clashing like this you know like this right i don't know if you had tanks then but definitely i guess you had tanks then tanks tha us time first world war mein acha but definitely a lot of steel the clashing of steel and then what does he say he says this is a german soldier this some of the french soldier a british soldier on different sides but when they see each other no they don't think they are french i am german they think oh we are all soldiers yeah something let's go to war let's kill each other right that's what he's talking about and he says this that the fact that someone is a french soldier coming from that side and there's another guy coming from the other side does not really matter right does not really matter i think we have to wind up uh does not really matter that kind of a universal experience that kind of a sense of feeling uplifted in and through the storm of steel the clash mediated by machines by technology by bombs by guns that's where he places the element right which means that and that's why he would say the bourgeois does not know battle the bourgeois does not know war the bourgeois only looks for security and negotiations and bargaining right and it is lost the sense of the elemental right and there you see this huge difference from gandhi there why is why is the value why is there pure but pure but the human machine mixer is what he loves though the purity is purity in the sense of that pure sense of the elemental but there will be human machine in it right it's like a continuum so you see when we were talking about jiga vartov and uh, rodchenko malevich and the entire soviet avant-garde we are talking about the i mean yes the movie camera thing right where the human and the machine is one um um yeah i was trying to say one more thing um but you can see that they are from the same milieu all these guys the same milieu and or think of picasso's art picasso's art uh the cubists the surrealists you know all those grotesque pictures and all that but that's also the elemental is there in fact then later in the soviet union after the soviet avant-garde uh, jiga vartov kind of people are gone mayakovsky kind of people are gone later 
there is this one Soviet writer who will critique all these guys for being too much emphasizing on the elemental and the raw passions and enthusiasm and all of that. Even though Jiga Vartav actually has a movie called Enthusiasm. So that's more like sharing some sensibilities uh, that Hunger also would eulogize, you know, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm, you know, enthusiastic, elemental, you know. And the, so, oh yeah, so I was talking about futuristic, that the Soviets are very futuristic. And as you can see, he's very futuristic. So the primordial, but at the same time you would say, yeah, he's futuristic, but uh, as you yourself read out a moment ago, he talks about his ancestors. So futuristic, man machine, technological exuberance, but at the same time ancestor, the primordial, blood, race, community, all that is going to come together there. So I will give you this other piece. So, uh, so Hyunga, so that's Hyunga. Um, we'll do one more piece from around the same time, but for a, from a completely, hopefully, I can't now, I have to be, uh, completely bola mene, but hopefully from a completely different viewpoint. Uh, so this is from, I guess this is 19, 1932. This work is what, 19... 32 itself, I think, 31, 30, 32. Uh, 32? Yeah. yeah, 32 or 22? Kap ka hai 22? 32? Yeah, this Yunga thing? 32. 32, this, this is also 32. And this is also Germany. Just before uh, the, the Weimar Republic uh, is actually... Yeah, yeah. And please, uh, today is Thursday, please sit... All four or five days you have till we have the next session. And please go watch YouTube videos, World War, what were rockets used, what are the experiences of the people there. Or if you can buy one of those many uh, World War time books, please go through. You know, you need facts. If you don't know what happened in her. Uh, well, you know, with uh, this guy, uh, with Hunger, one famous battle that he fought, which is a famous battle in the First World War, is the Battle of Somme. S O M M E. Okay, yeah, that's uh, this thing. So just look around it, and war pe to kafi literature hai. all kinds of crazy people are there, you know, <laughs> who build on the war and Second World War and tanks and all that. So, so there's uh, this channel called the Great War. The Battle of Somme will be on that. It's very okay, crazy. okay. Maybe you can start with some. The Great War. Yeah, maybe you can start with some video which is just say some standard. Slightly uh, boring BBC series. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's a good to start from that, you know. There are series and World War. Yeah, the series and World War. So you can start with those basic kind of things. And, um, uh, um, but also if you follow, you know, some of these great figures, uh, then you also see people who have lived through. Uh, so in paint, painters were there, a lot of them were alive at that time, some writers were alive at that time. Um, look up Stephen Spender but I think Spender would be more like 30s and all but look up Stephen Spender George Orwell they would have stuff to say about this kind of things you know even though it would be mostly the period of fascism because they get consumed by the rise of Nazism then you know but <clears throat> the rise of Nazism the grounds are created by these people like Junger and even say if you read some like Rosa Luxemburg who gets assassinated in 19... 18 or 21. Uh, so even Rosa Luxemburg, Lenin, they have lived through the war, right? Um, and uh, um, um, so Karl Schmitt, Karl Schmitt, the great political theorist, uh, is around, and Karl Schmitt and Junger are in conversation. So here we are also doing Karl Schmitt. You are not realizing it, but uh, uh, Carl Smith and then from there we come to Agamben and Foucault, right? So Agamben will be, is very much aware of this entire scene and Foucault and Deleuze and Badiou, um, um, you know, all of them are Slavoj Zizek, of course, 
Um, so First World War is extremely important, which sets the, 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 the conditions out of which uh, critical theory comes out, out of which... Uh, but First World War is also, I think, George Bernard Shaw. G.B. Shaw is, I think, alive at that time. Um, yeah. Um, so, um, 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 yeah, of course, and, and again, talking about Gandhi, he, he collected a lot of people and sent them to fight on the side of the British, right? He, he did that. He recruited a lot of soldiers from here. There's this collection of Indian soldiers who fought, because you see, talking about Indian migration to the West, the, if you go to the pre-history or the history of the NRI community, Indians reaching in the West, the first time they really reach uh, the West in large numbers is as soldiers, they go and fight um, in Europe. So there's this collection which has come of letters Indian soldiers wrote back home. Say someone is fighting in deep in France, in some village and all, because war meant you enter forests and villages and ravines and hills and all that. So this Indian soldier is stuck there. War bhi khatam ho gaya, wo wapis nahi aapa raha hai. To idhar bibi bacho ko chitthi lekh raha hai, wo. And he describes what it was like to live through that war. You know, I think 2018 or 17 in India, the Indian army celebrated the 100 years of the First World War and the Indian soldiers who participated in that. So war would be just maybe lasted 2-3 years. But it is such a frenzied, concentrated activity that it sets the, the tone, the milieu, the atmosphere for the rest of the century. That's what wars do. And also at the level of technological innovation. Like in India, do you know that Indian capitalism, Indian industry, for the first time becomes really big and powerful precisely at the time of the First World War? Because the British told all these Indian small companies and all ki bhai bahut banana hai then the british uh, the colonial administration also gave them all the facilities that they needed to become big because the british needed war supplies i think the tatas what is the history of jamshedpur steel please look it up i think it's connected to the first world war and definitely later first world second world war mein to kafi Indian industry se bhi kafi unhone supplies liya tha. Chuki company hai to kya aapko to demand chahiye na? Aapko order place kar raha hai, war ho raha hai wahan. To itna 50 ya 1000 tank banana hai. To uska jo loha chahiye. Yeah. To wo to chahiye. So look all these things up, you know.